Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. Give God the honor. Give Him all the power He belongs. Hallelujah. With His praise. We honor Him and give Him glory today. Amen. We thank Him for His infinite goodness, for His marvelous um, grace that He has bestowed upon us, and for unending, hallelujah, mercy. We thank Him this morning. Amen. We pray that you have had a wonderful Thanksgiving, amen, and that you have done all that you could do to stay safe, amen, and to enjoy each other. Prayerfully, you prayed for someone, but it's not too late if you have not prayed for someone, then we're going to ask you to just reach out and pray for someone, amen, in honor of our thanksgiving for what God has done for us. We want to, uh, we want to do the same for him, amen. To, uh, to be the, the, the ones who would build his kingdom, his eternal kingdom. That's his, that's his desire. And when we love him, we want to do what pleases him. Amen. So we say good morning to you. You've reached uh, Haskell Heights First Baptist Church. We nickname ourselves The Height. And uh, we want you to just feel welcome into the service. Amen. We, uh, we delight to have the, the soldiers of Christ, amen, the saints get together and to worship him. And we delight for anyone who is visiting with us, we want to say to you uh, that you're welcome, amen. We don't, we, we don't really kind of call you strangers, amen, because we believe that God makes appointments for people to be uh, part of his fellowship. And so we thank God that your name was already in the consideration for today when you joined in with us. So we say welcome, but, but you're in the family of God, amen? And we bless you for just being with us on today, amen? We thank God for his, um, just, just for his, his kind uh, mercy, amen? That he would stay the hand of the enemy and allow us to get together again one more time to worship him, amen? In fact, um, there's, there's an old song, uh, that, that the old saints used to say, and I, I just want to take a, take a moment, amen, and to use that. They said this, one more time, one more time, he allowed us to come together, one more time, one more time. To come together for one more time. Will you sing it with me? Sing one more time. Oh, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time. Oh, one more time. Oh, one that you were brought here to the earth realm, amen? That when you've been brought and you have 
receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become a soldier in his army. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for you. We ask him to bless you abundantly and give you grace, mercy, peace, and favor with this new year of life. Amen. For those of you who have an anniversary, we say to you, happy anniversary. God bless you. Amen. For your persevering spirit and for, uh, for just celebrating what God has done in your life. Amen. For those of you who have experienced victories of every kind, we say to you, we say to you, congratulations. Amen. And we bless God for your victory. Amen. Amen. And then we want to, uh, we want to lift up those who are in, in any way downtrodden, in any way, uh, by the way, uh, you know, um, by the wayside right now. Anyone who's feeling a little out of sorts, if your body's in pain, if your mind is experiencing frustration, if your heart is heavy, if your emotions have got the best of you right now, if, if this, even during this holiday season time, if this, you say that it's not necessarily a great time for me, where's my family, where is my grace, where's my favor, I've had to do without, whatever your circumstance, amen, it might be money, it might be, uh, it might be illness or sickness in your body or sickness in your family. It might be a circumstance that's come up, up, up upon you and, and you, you don't know how to handle every little thing. We want to stand together with you right now at this moment just to say that we're standing with you, the soldiers. You're not by yourself in this battle, in this fight. Hallelujah. And we want to remind you right now that the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ that he won on the cross on Calvary belongs to you right now. Hallelujah. That you will get better. That God will improve your situation. That you will rise up. Hallelujah. You are victorious. You're more than conquerors through him who loved you. That you are greater. Hallelujah. It is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. And we want to remind you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you will condemn. We thank you right now for victory. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for victory for our loved ones right now. If they're sick, you're a healer. Lord God, if you if they're in lack right now, you are the God of more than enough right now. We thank you, Lord God, that you promise never to leave them nor forsake them. We thank you even now, oh God, almighty God. We thank you, God, for lifting them up, Lord God, that you are the lifter up of their heads right now, Lord God. We thank you, almighty God, for our brother, for our sister that's feeling kind of low right now, God. But we say that you will exalt them because they humble themselves in your sight now, in the name of Jesus. May your power come down upon them. May you shower them with your grace and your favor. Lord God, may you turn around their situation right now in the name of Jesus. Bring comfort because you are the comforter. Hallelujah. You walk beside us right now, Lord God. And there's no harm, no hurt, nor danger. Amen. May enter God their dwelling in the name of Jesus. We call them well. We call them blessed. We call them better than before, Lord God. And we ask you, oh God, that you lift my brother, lift my sister, Lord God. Cause them to know that they are the righteousness of Christ, Lord God. And that you will attend to their every need. Cause them to cast their cares upon you because you care for them now, God. And help them, Lord God, that the spirit of depression must flee right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Devil, we remind you right now that this is God's soldier and you have no right. Your hand has no right in their situation. We, we scatter you. We cause you to flee at the hole that you've dug. Hallelujah. That they may try to fall into. You will fall into yourself. You, your adversarial host, and everyone cause to further your cause. Now in the name of Jesus, we declare that our brother, our sister is free from struggle. Free from trouble, free from trial, and lift it up that they may praise you. And we bless you for it, Almighty God, that our brother and sister, even now, feels delivered. We bless you, God, and thank you. Hallelujah. Get yourselves ready for our Levitical assembly to come before you and lift us up a, a worship and a praise. Let that worship get in your spirit. Let that praise get in your spirit. Let that lift you. Let that encourage you. Let that inspire you. Let that push you and motivate you to do something greater. Hallelujah. With this day, for this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We say as usual, 
we thank you in advance for your support of this ministry, amen. That if you would, please take the time, go on our giving app on our website at www.haskellheightsfbc.com or you can visit us on our web, on, on our mobile app, amen, under Haskell Heights First Baptist Church. It's entitled The Height. You download that to your phone and we have giving options on both the website and the church app. If you would continue to support the ministry, we are in, in, uh, ever grateful for the work that you do to support the ministry of Jesus Christ, amen, that it may perpetuate and that we may do the right things to, to bring the world, hallelujah, the message of salvation. Help us, won't you do it? We bless God for you. Come on, get yourselves ready for, for, for this uh, worship and this praise, hallelujah. 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 God is so good. He's so great. He's so awesome. He's such a protector. He's such a deliverer. He's such a keeper. And as Pastor prayed for those of you who are struggling this morning, it's good not to focus on that, but to focus on he who has the power to change your situation. So open your hearts and open your minds to praise and worship this morning. No matter what's been going on the past week, no matter what's been going on since yesterday, push it to the side. I know sometimes it's hard and it's right here at the forefront. There's this huge cloud that you're looking at. But beyond that is sunshine. Because he didn't say that we wouldn't have trials, we wouldn't have tribulations, but that we would overcome them. He's already given us the victory. So we just have to walk it out. We have to focus on the walking out portion, amen. We are his creatures, we are his people. And just like a father wouldn't turn his hand away from his child here on earth, God will not turn his back on you. He loves you. And we just want to encourage you this morning. This song just says, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Just like in the word it says, Lord, give me a clean heart. We want God to dwell within us, but we, we want to give him room to clean up everything that may not be suitable for him. Amen. Clean up our words. Let go of those curse words. Cleaning up our thoughts. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And what we think is who we are and who we are. So cleaning up our minds. Cleaning up everything that's not like him. Hallelujah. So let's just say, Lord, prepare me. Can we just shout that? Lord, prepare me. Prepare my heart. Prepare my mind. I'm ready to receive what you have for me, not just today, but every day for the rest of my life because I choose you. He wants us to choose him. So this song is just saying, God, I choose you. Amen. Hallelujah.
open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to know I want to understand you, so open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, oh, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open To see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Oh, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high.
just to see you high and lift it up. Oh, high and lift it up. To see you high and lift it up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we Hallelujah. God will lift that heavy spirit. That cloud will disappear. 
Hallelujah. And you'll be, you'll be amazed at how God will flood you with the spirit of joy. Hallelujah. In the midst of your praise. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and tell him he's worthy, worthy, worthy. Go ahead and tell him. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead and tell him, God, you're righteous. You're righteous. You're righteous. Hallelujah. Call him king. Hallelujah. Call him just judge. Hallelujah. Call him way maker. Hallelujah. Thank you. Call him. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Tell the Lord you love him. Tell the Lord you adore him. Tell the Lord he's lifted high. Hallelujah. Tell him that you exalt him in all things right now. In the name of Jesus. God, we submit to you. Even at this moment of worship, we submit to you. Thank you for entering us into the Holy of Holies now, God. God, we have treasured this opportunity to walk into your gates with praise, with thanksgiving, and into your courts, Lord God. We spent time in your courts in praise, hallelujah. And we're thankful unto you. God, and we bless your name. But God, now we have this opportunity to enter into your Holy of Holies. We're looking for your counsel right now, God. We want you to tell us something, Lord God, that will alleviate our struggle and help us, Lord God, to be able to, to lift that heavy spirit and to walk in victory. So even now, we thank you, Almighty Father, for what it is that you'll say to us. We receive it, Lord God. Lord God, your word, our inheritance, and this blessing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. And amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to turn with me to the book of Romans, to the book of Romans in the, the 10th chapter, amen? And um, we want to talk to you for just a little bit on this, this idea of how God has graced us and gifted us with um, this opportunity, amen, to lift us out of our oppressed place. How many people know what it's like to have an oppressed place? To be in a place where it doesn't, first of all, it doesn't feel good, amen. But you're not at your best. You're not, you're not operating in your gifting. You're not operating in your power and in your strength. Hallelujah. But I thank God for his, his inimitable, um, his inimitable way and for his unsearchable wisdom. Amen. Today I want to share with you something of God's unsearchable wisdom that he has done great and mighty things in our experience, amen? Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, I'm gonna begin at the verse six, amen? And I just want to make sure, because God's word preaches all by itself, it doesn't really take, um, you know, the preachers have been assigned a role to, to, to break apart that which has already been spoken and to speak again that which has already been spoken. And so I want to make certain that we take time always to give God room to speak. Amen. Amen. I noticed on the uh, broadcast is my cousin's birthday, Sister Tanya Jackson. Shout out to you on your birthday, girl. Amen. Praise the Lord. And God bless you. Powerful minister. And we thank God for her. Amen. Amen. And so we want to uh, want to turn your attention to Romans chapter 10, looking at verse 6, and it says this, but the righteousness of faith, but the righteousness of faith, that's opposed to the righteousness of the law, the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will ascend into the abyss? Said. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. Hallelujah. He's not far away from you is what the word is trying to say. That we don't have to, the word of God doesn't say that we have to get into the realms and bring him down. Or we have to go into the abyss where he died and, and bring him up into our, into our realm. But look what it says. But verse 8 says, but what does it say? It says the word is near you. Would you say that with me? The word is near you. In the King James it says it's nigh you near means nigh that, that that the word is near you look how near it is it says in your mouth and in your heart that's where the word is it's in your mouth and in your heart this this it says that is the word of faith which we preach this word of faith which we preach 
And it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then it gives us explanation in verse 10. It says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness. That with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Hallelujah. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. I want to take time and just break, break that apart. But I want you to know that um, God, God knew that we would have trouble. He knew that we would have trial and tribulation. He sent us here with purpose and he sent us uh, down here with uh, this, this sense of mission, this incredible sense of mission and purpose. And when he gave us our purpose, he, he did not leave us. He said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you always, even into the end of the world. That was the promise that Jesus gave to his disciples. And, and when he did that, he, he said, now, I want you to go and do that which I charged you to do. Now, we're here uh, to do something. Amen. We're not here just to spectate. We're not here um, to, to just to look at others while they operate. Because God has uniquely gifted every one of us. I'm going to preach it until I see a change. He's uniquely gifted every one of us, amen? Which, which really means to me that you have no time, that you don't, don't take time, which means that you don't have time to, to look down on yourself, to, to let the enemy tell you about what you're not and what faults you have, have, have you know, mistakes you've made. You don't have time to dwell there. We've got something of significance to do for our master. And because we have something of great significance to do, that when you fall down, God says, get up. You've got work to do, amen. Shake yourself off, amen. That he's already done the work of forgiveness for you. Oh, somebody ought to shout already. That, that you know what, don't, don't take time and start rehearsing what the enemy will get in your ear and try to make you remember all the wrong things you've ever done, everything that you've ever said. News flash, you're going to do something else wrong. Hallelujah. But God said, I've already given you the grace of forgiveness and salvation that you might be able to overcome that which the enemy will try to straddle and saddle you with. Amen. So, so we want you to we want you to understand that God in this passage, in this this incredible wisdom that God has laid before us today in his word in Romans chapter 10, God uh, knew that we would have these needs and so he equipped us with three instruments to overcome hallelujah our troubles somebody say this with me salvation overcomes strong salvation overcomes strong and in this word it says whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved hallelujah it said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, we say that at the end of broadcasts, we say that at the end of worship services, and we say that uh, any time that we want to introduce what we call an invitation to discipleship for Christ. We say that to folks who need to have, uh, need to know how it is that we can gain entry into the, in, into the body of Christ. That we say to them, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and we confess is really just a fancy word to, to say, just say it with your mouth, amen? Just let it come out of your mouth. Say it, hallelujah, that the Lord is, that, that Jesus is Lord. I don't have any problem saying that out of my mouth. Jesus is Lord. Would you say that? Would you just take a, take a moment, wherever you are, just say, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Don't let, it be, don't let it be something the preacher says during the preaching time because it's really meant for the saint. It's really meant for those who need, who need to embrace salvation. It's, it, when you say Jesus is Lord, hallelujah, out of your mouth, you have done what, what is part of the prerequisite for your power. Hallelujah. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And, and look at this, but believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Because uh, uh, our deacon says, the deacon says this, he said, you can make your mouth say anything. 
a lot of people will, will, will try to, you know, just kind of put on some things and I'll, I'll say some stuff in, in, in the midst of you just because I can run my mouth and, and a lot of preachers can run their mouths but and people can run their mouths. But, but God says this, that it's not about just running your mouth because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, Matthew 12, the mouth speaks, amen. And so when, when, if, if, if we're speaking out of our mouths, we want it to be abundant in our heart so that what comes out of our mouths is actually what was already planted in our heart. I'm going to get there so I can get you some, some understanding there. But he says, but if you believe in your heart, look what it says, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. How many folks can truthfully say that without a shadow of a doubt, I wasn't here, I didn't see it, but when I heard about it, something on the inside agreed with it, that the God raised Jesus Christ after the, on the third day, he raised him up from the dead. That means he died on the cross on Calvary. He took my sins and your sins to the cross. He that they nailed him to the cross and with him on the cross because he took on my sin and my struggle. He took on my ill health. He took on my depression. He took on my situation. He took on my trouble and my trial. I hope you're getting where I'm coming from now. He took on everything that would potentially ever frustrate me. He took it to the cross with him and he killed it on the cross. Somebody ought to say that my struggle is killed. It's already overcome because he took it with him on the cross and when, when, they, when they crucified him, what they did was they crucified my struggle. They crucified my trouble. That's a revelation that when trouble tries to come upon you, you need to be able to say to your trouble, uh-uh-uh, you've already been crucified. It went with him on the cross. But guess what? There was more to the story that when it went up with him on the cross, that on the third day he rose from the dead, that, that the enemy would have said that, you know what, trouble is meant to kill you, that your struggle is meant to bring, bring you to the point of death. But Jesus said, you don't have to die behind struggle because I've already died for it. But when he got up from the grave, Romans 8 says the same spirit, hallelujah, that was hovering over in Genesis 1, the face of the deep, called down and picked up Jesus from the grave. He empowered him to get up from that grave. And, and when he got up from the grave, he overcame death, the penalty for your sins. So see here that your sins have been paid for, your struggle has been taken care of, it's been overcome, and he said that, that the penalty called death has been overcome when he was raised from the dead. Do you believe he was raised from the dead? He said, do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? I believe him. I believe that he raised up from the dead, amen? And because he raised up from the dead, I have to believe that my struggle is over. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, it may not feel like your struggle is over. It may not look like your struggle is over. But sometimes you got to remind your struggle that it's over. Amen. You can't keep coming back. You know, in a court of law, you can't keep reintroducing that which has already been dismissed. You can't keep bringing up that which has already been. Hallelujah. Uh, but, but Saint, I need to tell you something that you can't keep going back into the door that's already been shut. I want you to hear this in, 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 in the word it says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. He said, for with, this is verse 10, with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. He says that, you know what? It's the heart that actually does the believing. And, and, the, and the powerful part is that, that we want you to understand that the heart is really, when you see heart and the occurrences of heart in scripture, really talking about that inner person, that inner self. That, that thing that's on the inside as opposed to the outside, the flesh. Because the flesh is fickle. That means the flesh is changy. The flesh will, it, 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 it'll go one way today and it'll go one way. The flesh is two-faced. It'll do whatever, you know, it'll be chameleon. It'll be, you know, good when it's called to be good, but it'll be bad when it's called to be bad. The flesh is undisciplined. The flesh is, you know, the, the flesh is carnal and the flesh is not strengthened. Amen. But God says, don't worry so much over the flesh because I did my work on the inside. Let me just stop there for a moment because I need you to remember something from our Bible studies that, that we are a, we are a tripartite uh, design 
in our human design, we're tripartite. When God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we call it Trinity. He's a tripartite design. And in Genesis 1, 26, God said that he made us in his image, in, in his likeness, that we are likewise a tripartite design. That when God, uh, uh, that when he made us of our construction, he took the dust of the earth, he took the dirt of the earth, hallelujah, and he blew into it the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And so when we look at that, that passage, we understand that there's three parts to us, that there is a flesh or dirt or dust, whichever way you like to uh, envision it. But there's a flesh part, which is the dust, and God took it and he blew into it the breath, which is the spirit, the, the ruah, hallelujah, the pneuma. He blew into that, that, that dust, he blew into it his life, his his power, his identity, he blew into the, the dirt, the, the identity of the very God. So we got the very God living on the inside of us. Hallelujah. And it said that man became a living, hallelujah, soul. Now, dirt isn't living. But God says that when he put his life into that dirt, he became a living soul. So we are a body or flesh. We are a soul and then we are a spirit. We are the house for the spirit of the almighty God. That God lives on the inside of us and he gives us power. Now, in, 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 incidentally, there's always this fight between the spirit, which is in the inner deep of us, and the flesh, which is on the outside of us. We're all tugging at the soul because the soul is the will of man. Hallelujah, somebody. The soul is the will of man and the flesh is pulling on the soul because it wants the soul to make fleshly decisions. But the spirit is in the backside saying, nah, uh, 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 I don't want you going there. And it yanks the soul back so that the soul doesn't have to get in trouble. But the enemy wants your soul simply because it's the decision maker in you. And the enemy wants you to make a decision for him instead of making a decision for Christ. I hope you understand that that's just a simple fight that's going on within us at all times. But I came to announce to you today that the gospel says, the good news is, that you're an overcomer, that salvation overcame your struggle. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to get excited about that because salvation is not just being saved and now I don't have to go to hell. But if you remember that little old word called sozo, we spell it like this, S-O-Z-O. -O. And, and, and when we call that that Greek word, when, when the Jew met each other uh, back in the Old Testament days, they would say shalom. And shalom was not just how you're doing, but shalom was that way for them to impart to their brother or their sister that, that all should be well with you. I pray that you'll prosper. I pray that God will favor you. I pray that you'll be blessed going in and going out. I pray that, that the Lord will favor you. I pray that all goes well, not only in your life, but in the generations of your life to come. When a Hebrew shook hands, he was imparting blessing to his brother or his sister. Every time they met with a greeting, they would say to each other, you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Man, if we could just walk around and, and impart blessing to one another when the enemy's trying to mess up your brother or your sister, when you came by and said a little more than just hi, but, but you said you'd be blessed. You have lifted that person out of their potential struggle. You canceled the assignment of the enemy against them. Hallelujah. And you need to know that God has empowered us. How has he empowered us, Pastor? Because he said this in verse 10, but with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but it says, and with the mouth, y'all say this with me, with the mouth, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Made to salvation. That means that confession has been made unto your rescue. You, you've been rescued from danger. That means that you've been, confession has been made unto, uh, unto this, that you have been healed from your affliction. That confession has been made such that you have been delivered from all forms of oppression. Oh, that's good news. Confession has been made so that you've been set free to prosper. That nobody, or if you don't like the word prosper, some people think you're preaching the prosperity gospel. It's really prosper or progress. 
Y'all say it with me. That sometimes we got to know that God wants us to progress. Anything living doesn't sit still. It bears fruit. It grows and grows and grows until it reproduces after its own kind, which bears seed so that it can reproduce in the next generation as well. God wants you to grow and to prosper in what he has given you to do. And don't worry about the money part, because if you're prospering in God, God's going to make a way for you out of no way, because that's just who God is. He's the he, he is the God. Hallelujah who provide Jireh, all of our needs. Hallelujah. That means that, 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 that God has made a, a, unto salvation, that he has made us whole in the places where we have been broken, and he has preserved us unto the coming of the Lord. So when you're looking at that word, it was that big word that was shalom back in the Old Testament, but, but made its way into this concept called sozo, or, or saved, or soteria, called salvation. I'm talking Greek and English at the same time, but, but y'all hear what I'm saying? It made its way into those little words that we call saved and salvation that really means rescued and healed and delivered and set free and made a whole when you're broken and preserved unto the coming of the Lord. How about that? If God would give us such a grace that would make us be able to, 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 to overcome all of our struggles that God has given us or equipped us with three instruments, hallelujah, in this passage to overcome everything that we would ever experience. Y'all listen with me for just a few more, few more minutes. I want you to understand that God has not left us alone in the battle. And a lot of people would say, God, why would you, why would you let the earth be so corrupt? Why would you leave us here in the midst of this battle? Why would you leave us in, in such a wild, wild west? Or uh, why would you uh, allow us to have to experience such a, a jungle for ourselves? And God would say, because I made you ambassadors, hallelujah. Y'all hear what I'm trying to say, that God is trying to help us to remind us, 2 Corinthians 5, hallelujah, that, that you are an ambassador for the Lord, that you came from a, a land where there's peace. You came from a land. You might have been born here, just like Jesus was born here, but, it, but he's not from here, hallelujah. Some folk need to recognize they're not from here. They're really, they, they come here, but they're not from here. And we've got to acknowledge and have this revelation that we're not from here. We're from a higher place. God dropped us here for the purpose of doing his work. He knew that this would be a corrupt earth. He knew that this would be a chaotic place. But God said, but I brought you here and I've empowered you with three instruments, hallelujah, to overcome every struggle. And when you overcome every struggle, you become a witness for those who are likewise trying to overcome their struggles. Listen what he says. In this passage right here, and I've entitled the message, hallelujah, the message, hallelujah, the mouth and the motive, the message, the mouth and the motive, three instruments to overcome your struggle, hallelujah. If you look at this passage, I want you to see it one more time. Starting at verse 5, it says, Moses wrote about this righteousness which is of the law because there was a, a, an argument about which was the real righteousness. Was it the righteousness of the law or was it the righteousness which is of faith? Hallelujah. And if you want more, uh, you want more uh, insight on this, then read this fascinating book, Romans chapter 4. It, this, this entire series of Romans is... And, and I've got to just do a series on Romans simply because it's, it's probably the most power-packed book in, in all of the gospel letters, amen? Because Paul, in his journeys, um, in, 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 his, in, in his missionary journeys, was really trying to reach Rome because if he would overcome Rome, he, had, he would then begin to influence the entire Roman Empire. And then the known uh, power in the world would then be one for the gospel of Christ. That's what we're trying to do, what Paul was trying to do back then. We ought to be doing even now that our life is a missionary journey. We only come here for a moment in time so that we can, we can do what Paul did is to spread the word about God's righteousness all through this land. If we did that faithfully, we would have less incidences of craziness. That, that, that God's righteousness would overcome craziness. Hallelujah. Y'all hear what I'm saying, but look back at the text. He said that, which is the righteousness of all the law? He says, the man that does those things shall live by them, meaning the righteousness of the law. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. He said, do not say in your heart, 
Kugel ascend into heaven and bring Christ down. You don't have to bring Christ down from heaven. Or who will descend into the abyss and bring Christ up from the dead. You don't have to bring Christ up from the dead. He already arose from the dead. But it says in verse 8, but what does it say? It says the word, hallelujah, the word in John chapter 1 helps us to understand the word, hallelujah, is, is not only that which is written on the pages of the Bible, but the word was made flesh and dwelt among them. That means Jesus, who is the word, the same Jesus by his spirit that lives on the inside of you. So you got the word on the inside of you. And this is why Paul would say the word is near you. It's in your mouth. Hallelujah. And in your heart. Hallelujah. And, and, and he was asking at that point, he, he, Paul was saying, here's the message. I want you to understand what the message is. Because a lot of times people get the message wrong. That they will think you've got to bring Christ down from heaven or you've got to do something to, to bring him up from the dead. And a lot of churches are it's trying to go on this journey to bring him from one place or from the other. When God said that you don't have to bring him down, he's in your midst already he's already right there in your in your in your midst he's there in your sanctuary he's in your house he's in your kitchen he's on your job he's in your neighborhood he's in your body he's in your situation he's in your hospitals he's in your nursing homes y'all don't hear what I'm saying he's in our churches he's among our friends he's wherever we go that's where Christ is God is saying to us that you don't have to try to, to try to sing him down from heaven. There's a lot of folk that try to sing him down, send the power of God down when God is saying that the power is already in your midst, the power. And if folks would understand that you got weapons right in your midst, but if you don't use your weapons, you're going to be a defeated foe when those come against you and you don't know how to yield your sword. You don't know how to use your weapons. God said that where is this word? It's near you. You. That's the message that the word is near you. But where is it? He said it's in your mouth. Somebody needs to understand that the word is in your mouth. God said, I didn't just give you a word so you can read it. I didn't just give you a word so you can just, just so, so you can ponder over it. I gave you a word which is active. It's powerful. It's alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And if I give you a weapon, I intend for you to use it. That's the power of confession. Confession says that the words got to come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. That you've got to tell somebody what God told you. If you read this word, it's not just for you to read and get it on the inside. Because those inner parts, hallelujah, it says in this part right here, it's in your heart. That's why you've got to read the word so you can get the word in your heart. Because once it's down in your heart, it says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is supposed to the Bible says, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We're not supposed to believe and keep it to ourselves. We're supposed to speak what God has spoken to us. We're supposed to tell somebody what God has told us. The word's supposed to come out of your mouth in prayer. The word's supposed to come out of your mouth in song. The word's supposed to come out of your mouth in your counsel. The word's supposed to come out of your mouth, hallelujah, in your prayer. The word's supposed to come out of your mouth just when you're holding general conversation. It's supposed to be all in you so it can come all out of you. The word is supposed to make a difference wherever you go. You're supposed to be so empowered, so saturated, so filled up with this word that it just kind of leaks out of your mouth. He said, what is it that's supposed to come out? Tell him the message that the word is right in your midst. Sit there. I need you to know that the word describes your healing. He's Jehovah Rapha and the word is near you. Hallelujah. That which is abounding and oppressed. That I already saved you. You've been delivered from destruction. Hallelujah. I need you to understand that it might look like you have chains on your legs and your arms might look like they're chained but I need you to let some words come out of your mouth and speak to your chains right now and say you have no right because Jesus took the chains off of me I'm free to do what God told me to do you've been rescued from danger you've been healed from your affliction you've been delivered from oppression you've been set free to prosper and to progress and to grow and to be disciples. 
disciples and to make disciples. You have been blessed, hallelujah, to be made whole when you're broken. Amen. Your heart may have been broken, but God said, I'm the mender of the breach. I will build your heart right back. Don't let that man tear you apart because I can build your heart right back. Don't let that woman make you feel like you can't be anything. I'm the one who made you and I can knit you back together again. God said, I'll preserve you even till my coming again because I promise never to leave you. No but I need you to get to work, hallelujah. Lose your instruments. God said, speak the word. Preach the word. Sing the word. Pray the word. Walk the word. Talk the word. Live the word. The message. Hallelujah. The mouth. But God said the motive. And I'm finished with you. That God said that it's with the it's with the heart that man believes. What you're saying out of your mouth doesn't mean anything unless it's filled with the right motive. And so, so the motive is that which really comes from the heart. There are a lot of people, hallelujah, that have a lot of works on earth, but their works are insufficient because they're filled with wrong motives that you really want to do stuff for your own glory and for your own good yes. but God said I'm not looking for someone with selfish ambition I'm looking for ambassadors who will come and do my bidding God said that your works are insufficient because it's not the best that you can do some people go about their work in a half-hearted way and don't give God their very best when God already invested in you what to give back to him, amen? He knows what you're capable of because it's him who lives on the inside of you. Don't give God anything half-cocked. Give God what, what, what he gave you, hallelujah. Be diligent about your work, hallelujah. And then, then there are some folks who just do work, hallelujah, work on earth simply because they're looking for the applause of men, amen? You're looking for somebody to say, good job. You're looking for somebody to say, well done, y'all good and faithful servant. But God said, that's my job, hallelujah, that I'm the one that pronounces over you, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm coming back to evaluate your stewardship, hallelujah. But God said that if your motive is right, if your heart is right, he said, then that which will come that you invest on the inside of you, that comes on of you by way of your mouth will be empowered to make change. I need you to stand up and be an influencer in this culture today. I need you to take on your proper assignment and your proper role and not just come to church and sit back and enjoy music. You're supposed to be a part of the music because the music is the word of God coming out of your mouth and you don't know that when your neighbor who's standing next to you that he is the word out of song, out of your mouth, might get delivered from something, might be healed from something, might be set free, prosper, and progress. You don't know that when you're talking to someone, that when you're speaking the word to them, that they may be encouraged and motivated and empowered to, to, to do what God has invested in them. I need you to take on your assignment. I need you to use the message, hallelujah, the word is near you right now. I need you to use your mouth speak forth that which God has planted within and I need it to be the right motive don't make it about you make it about God hallelujah be a kingdom builder so that God will get the glory somebody ought to give God some praise today somebody ought to give God some glory today he is the only one that is deserving of the praise and he said if you'll humble yourself in the under the hand of the almighty God he'll exalt you in due time I want to be exalted by Jesus. I don't need man's praise. I don't need the world's praise. All I'm looking for is a well done from my master. Good and faithful servant. Tell somebody about the goodness of God. Be diligent. Be faithful. Get somebody out of their awful situation. Tell them that there's deliverance for your kind of struggle. That salvation overcomes your struggle. The message, hallelujah. The mouth, hallelujah and 
the motive. God bless you. We praise God. We thank God for you. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you even now. We honor you even today. We thank you, Lord God, for the power that's in your word right now. And we won't keep our mouths shut any longer, God. When we feel aches and pains, the first thing we're going to remember is that I got the healer on the inside of me. Before I call the doctor, I'm going to call Dr. Jesus. Hallelujah. When I'm in danger, I'm not going to dial 911 before I shout Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I know that you're nearer than the police officer. You're nearer than the doctor. Hallelujah. And you're more, you're more profound than my struggle right now. So I thank you, Master, that you live within, that you work from within, Lord God. And you use this incredible instrument called my mouth to manifest that which is already true, to reorder the circumstances around me in my flesh now. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to tell my flesh to behave when it gets out of order. I'm going to put back in order that which is out of order by way of my mouth because you granted me favor by giving me my mouth and then you fill me with your spirit so that your word can come out of my mouth. I'm going to stop letting evil come out of my mouth because I can't use the same instrument for both evil and for good at the same time and so I'm going to use it for your glory and I thank you for it right now. Now master we ask that somebody who needs sound somebody who needs to call out on the name of Jesus so that they can be saved if they will confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord if they will believe in their heart that God really did raise you from the dead Lord God that they would be saved sanctified delivered healed from oppression made whole Lord God rescued Lord God set free and preserved until your coming again Lord God help them to right now master I want you to be in my life I want more of you I want you Lord God hallelujah to be my Lord my navigator my, my, my company keeper I want you to be my father I want to be your son I want to be your daughter I want into your family I want into the kingdom I want you to use my hands and use my feet use my mouth use my life Lord God so that you can build your mighty kingdom Oh God, we glorify you, we magnify you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. If I prayed about you, I'm gonna ask that you would contact us over, contact us over our website, www.haskellheightsfbc.com. Contact us on our church app and say, Pastor, I pray to receive Jesus Christ. Just send us a message. You can email us at HaskellHeightsFBC at gmail.com. Send us a message. Come on, say, I want in. I want the Lord in my life. Hallelujah. And we'll contact you back and minister to you that the Lord might get the glory. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah.
life. 